Every year for the past two years, I've given my personal pick on the best overall value used MacBook. And this year, we're gonna do it again. This year's best value MacBook is provided by Declutter. This is the reigning champion, the late 2013 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro with dual graphics. For the past two years running, it has been the best bang for your buck because it was recent enough to receive updates, powerful enough to handle demanding tasks, and even below $1,000. This year though, it's not my MacBook of choice. To be considered the best overall MacBook, it needs to balance price, performance, and lifespan. And quite frankly, the 2013's age is starting to show. Don't get me wrong, the late 2013's are still good computers, and now that they cost about $600 to $700, they're definitely still a good value, they're just not the best overall. Because now, there's a new kid on the block. It's a kid you may have met before, and it goes by the name Mid-2015. That's right, I declared it the best MacBook of the 2010s. It's the Mid-2015 15-inch Dual Graphics MacBook Pro. I held back on recommending this particular model in previous years because, quite frankly, they were overpriced. Now though, things have changed, and the Mid-2015 is my top pick. Here's why. Let's start with the specs you should look for. Keep in mind that I'm specifying dual graphics for a reason. From late 2013 to mid 2015, Apple, for some reason, put integrated graphics on the base configuration 15 inch MacBook Pro. So look out for the ones equipped with the much better dual graphics cards. These models come with either a 2.5 gigahertz Core i7 4870HQ or a 2.8 gigahertz Core i7 4980HQ. They all have 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM either a 512 gigabyte or one terabyte SSD, and most importantly, AMD Radeon M370X graphics with two gigabytes of VRAM. To be honest, it does not matter if you go for the 2.5 or 2.8 gigahertz processor, there's not a ton of difference between them, so as long as you find one with the dedicated graphics, you'll be in good shape. That being said, some of you might be thinking at this point, hold on a second, that's still a five-year-old MacBook, and don't the late 2013s also come with fourth generation Haswell processors and 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM? Well, yes. There aren't a ton of differences between the mid-2015 and late-2013 MacBook Pros. In fact, they're visually indistinguishable from each other. But the differences there are, are very important. The AMD M370X graphics are the biggest difference between this and the older, late-2013 models with GT750M graphics. In Unigen Heaven on the Extreme preset, we get a score of 328 compared to 256. Okay, sure, neither of these are great, and this certainly isn't a gaming laptop, but the M370X definitely makes a difference in some creative applications. I grabbed a 16 minute 4K clip and threw it in a Final Cut timeline with color correction to see how long it would take to render. The late 2013 took a whopping 28 minutes and five seconds, where the mid 2015 accomplished the task in 24 minutes and 34 seconds. That's a solid two and a half minutes faster. When under load in Cinebench R20, this CPU boosts four to 500 megahertz over the 2.5 gigahertz base clock. But as with most Apple laptops, it's running right at the thermal limit, 96 to 99 degrees Celsius. We get a score of 1,420 points, which is not too far behind the quad core 2013 Mac Pro, funny enough, and pretty much on par with the late 2013 MacBook Pro, which is perhaps unsurprising considering they have practically the same CPUs. So clearly the raw horsepower of this machine isn't outstanding or particularly cutting edge. It is obviously a five-year-old MacBook, but the name of the game here is overall value, and that's the mid-2015's specialty. Something worth keeping in mind with these retinas is even though this computer is five years old, it really doesn't act like it. Apple's excellent retina displays and annoyingly proprietary but very snappy SSDs ensure smooth operation even after years have passed. The OEM drive in my machine has read-write speeds 
of 1300 megabytes per second, which is nearly twice as fast as the late 2013. Not that it really matters as the SSDs in these computers are upgradable. Late 2013 to mid 2015 MacBook Pros 13 or 15 inch can use NVMe SSDs with the help of a handy little adapter that I've linked in the description below. But enough about performance. Why should you choose the mid-2015 over a newer MacBook? Well, I'll concede the graphics in these guys are noticeably worse than the 2016 and 17 MacBooks, especially with the Radeon Pro 460 and 560. But there's a crucial factor at play here, value. The 2016 17s have stayed stubbornly expensive, over $1,000 even for a base model. Well, unless you're me and you find one for $700. And even aside from the cost savings, there are a number of factors that should compel you to consider the older retinas over the early touch bar models. Keyboard! Anyone who went from the scissor switch to the butterfly keyboard back in 2016 went, oh, ew when they tried out the newer keyboards. They're not great. I personally don't find them that bad to type on, but they're definitely not as good as these older keyboards, and the reliability is atrocious. And besides the keyboard, there's another crucial factor. This is called a universal serial bus drive, and the mid-2015 has a convenient receptacle on the side into which you can plug this drive. This cutting edge feature is known as a USB port, and it allows you to connect various peripherals to your computer without the need for an adapter or dongle. There's also a host of other interesting receptacles on this computer. This one is called a secure digital card slot, and it allows you to plug in the memory card from your camera. And then there's this really cool one. It's called the high definition multimedia interface. And with it, you can have this special cord that plugs into your computer and transfers your screen onto another display. It's really cool. So I think it's pretty clear why the mid-2015 is a fantastic choice for a used MacBook. So how do you go about getting a hold of one? Well, on eBay, a decent dual graphics model goes for about $700 to $1,000, depending on the condition and SSD capacity. If you can find one for under $750, you've done a pretty good job. I set up an eBay search that's filtered specifically for mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pros with the dual graphics, and I put that link in the description if you're interested. Alternatively, if you want a MacBook from a more trustworthy seller, you can check out Declutter. This video is not sponsored, but they sent over this 2015 MacBook. I've recommended Declutter to a number of people because their prices are fair, they stand by their products, and it takes away some of the stress and time of hunting through eBay listings. They do a thorough 70 point refurbishment process on all of their products, and everything comes with a 12 month limited warranty. You can check out the link below and also use my coupon code for 10% off if you're interested. So wherever you choose to purchase one of these from, I wouldn't recommend spending more than a thousand-ish dollars for a really, really nice one with top of the line specs. At that $700 to $1,000 price point, this is a great value. You get a healthy dose of performance, superb reliability, upgradable storage, fantastic displays, seven hour battery life, superb keyboard, great build quality, and an excellent force touch trackpad. Seriously, Apple makes the best trackpads in the business, bar none. This is a great overall package, and if precedent is to be believed, then this should receive support for about eight years, so until about 2023 would be my guess. Also, finally, you may have heard that there was a battery recall program for the 15-inch 2015 MacBook Pros, it's really nothing to worry about. It was very much overhyped in the media. Apple has a site where you can plug in your serial number and it'll tell you if your machine was affected. I'll link that down in the description below. Mine was not affected. And if it is, then you can get it replaced for free. It's really not that big a deal. But as a side effect, it did cause a lot of these computers to depreciate so you can get a better deal on a fantastic MacBook. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the mid-2015 MacBook Pro. Is this the best overall used MacBook? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please consider following me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. And don't forget to check out my subreddit, which is linked in the description below. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.